Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. I honestly believe that I have found the mother of all rabbit holes. I didn't think that I could find anything that would rock my world, so to speak, more than the flat earth theory. But yeah, it has actually happened. And I'm going to warn you straight off that if my videos on the flat earth kind of triggered you and made you angry, this video is likely going to also do the same. So I'm just going to ask you to keep an open mind as I go through these things. And I want to remind you that when I talk about the things in my question the narrative series, and I feel like I have to say this in every single question the narrative video, because people commenting always seem to automatically assume that I 100% believe in everything that I'm talking about. And the fact is, is that I'm questioning things. I'm asking questions. I happen to find these topics. I find them really interesting. I start looking into them. And if they have any sort of merit at all, then I look into them further and I share them with you. That does not automatically believe, that does not automatically mean, sorry, that does not automatically mean that I believe everything about them and that I believe them to be 100% true. What it does mean, though, is that I think that they're, they're worth looking into. And I think it's sad, though, that we do live in a society that we do have to ask these things because we've been lied to so much. So anyway, it's going to take me just a little bit to actually disclose what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the mother of all rabbit holes, because I kind of need to lead up to that. It's not going to take too long. But if you remember in the last video, I talked about resets and I gave, you know, like a basic 101 of Tartaria and resets and mud floods. And the reason that I did that was because I knew that if you didn't understand what those things were, you weren't going to understand this video. So what I'm going to start talking about, though, are biblical resets. Now, do I believe that some resets may have happened in the past that are not biblical? It's possible. I mean, at this point in time, I don't know anything. I'm not telling you 100% that anything is the case. Um, I'm just, again, I'm just hypothesizing. But I will talk about the biblical resets. So if we look at the biblical resets, I have come up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven biblical resets. One of them is just a possible reset. I'm not 100% sure about it. And the resets are the pre-Adamic one, which is the one that I'm not too sure about. The antediluvian one, which would actually have followed the, the pre-Adamic one. And then there's the post-flood, the Tower of Babel, the 1,000-year reign of Christ, the short season um, after Satan is loosed for those 1,000 years, and then after Satan is thrown into the fiery pit, then that is when the new earth happens. And yes, I think that all these things classify as resets just because everything is kind of starting over anew. So the pre-Adamic reset or it would also be included in the antediluvian reset, would be, I think it's a controversial thing. Um, again, I, I don't know that I 100% believe in this one or not, but there are some good arguments. So we're just going to read Genesis 1, um, not the whole chapter, but just the first few verses, the first two actually. And it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So what we typically believe is that God created the heavens and the earth, and that that was when, boom, that was when they were there for the first time ever. And that is what verse 1 means. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yes, that's the beginning. But there are some who believe that there is a gap between verse one and verse two. And the reason there's actually several reasons that they believe in that, and that's not what this video is about. So I'm going to keep this short, but they, they said that just the Hebrew that is used really calls things into question. Like for example, the word was actually in the Hebrew could be became. So the earth became without form and void. And also when it says that without form and void, the term that was used for that was tohu bohu, which means chaos and confusion. And so one question that people have is if God is a God of order, why did he create the earth in chaos? 
And another question that people have is that tohu bohu, when it is used later in the Bible, it is always referencing some sort of catastrophe. So something happened to create the chaos. So there are people who, yes, who believe that there was, you know, some sort of pre-Adamic race and something catastrophic happened. And then that was when God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and everything. So again, something that I'm just looking into. Um, anyway, so that would be considered the first reset when, you know, once Adam and Eve came, if there was a pre-Adamic race, that would be the, the first reset would be when Adam and Eve came or were created. Um, so then after that would be obviously the flood would be the next reset. And we talked about that in the last one. Um, and in that re in that one, so the post flood reset, um, actually a lot of people believe that buildings like this were actually left over from before the flood from the antediluvian times. There are actually those who believe that some of these structures were actually from the pre Adamic time. I don't know when they were from. Um, we'll, we'll, we won't know the, these things, I believe, this side of heaven. But yeah, that's when some people believe that some of these, um, I don't even want to say ruins because they're rebuilt, but that they came from. So then after the the post flood or after the flood, then came the Tower of Babel. That would be the next reset that I would think of as an actual reset. And I also talked about this in the in the last video, you know, where God mixed up the languages because the people had kind of banded together and they were all building this tower up into the heavens and they wanted to start a war with God. So he, he mixed up their languages um, and they kind of dispersed throughout the earth because they couldn't communicate with each other anymore. So, yes. So I would consider that to be a reset as well. So for the next one, I'm just going to read a little bit of Revelation 20 here. I'm going to read here. It says, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. And he seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years, and threw him into the pit and shut it and sealed it over him, so that we might not deceive the so that he might not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be released for a little while. Then I saw thrones, and seated on them were those to whom the authority to judge was committed. Also I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years. So we have this thousand year reign with Christ, with Christ and the saints ruling. And that to me would also be a reset. So Satan is out of the picture for a thousand years. And so now we're going to have a thousand years of people living with Christ. And you can only imagine how different things would be during that time. So after the thousand years, obviously then the next reset would come after the thousand years are up when Satan is, is released. So we're going to read right here, verse seven. And when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. Their number is like the sand of the sea. So I'm just going to stop right there. So what it tells you is that when the thousand years are ended, Satan will be released from prison and he will come out to deceive the nations. Um, it also tells us, oh, where did I see it? That check one second. Okay. So I see right here, it says, um, so that he might not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be released for a little while. And then down here, it tells us that he'll be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth. So to me, that means that he is not going to just come out of his prison and then immediately be thrown in the fiery pit. He's going to be here for a while. Now, some versions of the Bible say a short season. Um, so we don't really know how long he will be um, out of the prison, 
But yeah, that would definitely be another reset once the thousand years of living with Christ are ended and then Satan is back to, to uh, wreak havoc for a while. I think that would definitely cause some great upheavals and that would also be yet another reset. And then the last one is just when they are referring to the new earth. So in the Bible, we hear about the new earth. And I think that the new earth, after everyone is judged and after Satan is thrown in the pit forever, um, then there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And that is in Revelation 21. And I think that that would be the final reset. That is when everything is going to be as it will be for an eternity. So that is the resets. It took me like 10 minutes to talk about this and to reach this point. But I thought that, you know, it was important to go over what I'm referring to as resets. Now, here is where it starts to get a little bit strange. And here is where we come about to the mother of all rabbit holes. So there are those who believe that we typically think that right now, a lot of us think that we're going to be starting the tribulation soon. We see all the stuff going on in the world and we are just kind of waiting for everything to come about that's written in the book of Revelation. And what I found is that there are people who, who believe that we are not in that portion of the timeline, but that the 1000 years with Christ already happened and that we are living right now in the short season after Satan is released. So I know that there are some people, I just found out there's something called preterism. I, I think that's how you say it, um, that, that believe that most of the prophecies in the Bible have already been fulfilled. Um, and a lot of those people believe that we're living in the 1000 years with Christ now, but I think that we can look around us and see that, no, I definitely don't think that it's the 1000 year reign right now because there's too much other stuff going on. However, if we, if you would look at it, um, from their point of view, the things that we are going through right now, when Satan, um, is released from prison, it says that he will deceive everyone in the four corners of the earth. He is going to be out to deceive and he only has a very short time. He has a short season. So would it be possible for him to deceive people into believing that the thousand years of Christ had not even happened yet? So here are some of the verses that I've come across that they have used for this. So the first one is Matthew 24, 34. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Now, I know that there are people who, you know, I've looked into this already because I always had questions about this because a lot of times I've had people who are atheists say to me, oh, well, look, you know, it says this generation will not pass away and Jesus didn't come back yet. And, you know, so I looked it up and I know that some, they say that it's, it's about context, that he's talking about all of the things that are going to happen in the end times. So when he says this generation, he's actually referring to the people that are there alive during the end times, which made sense to me. Um, and then, so there's another one like that from Mark 13, 30, truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. And again, you know, they say it's about context. Context is key. Um, Luke 21, 32, verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Again, context. But then we get to Matthew 16, 28, and it says, truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. So they're not just talking about a generation. They're talking about some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. Um, and I know that there are people who try to explain these verses away because I looked it up and I'm just wondering, should we be taking these things at face value? So the next one here, Luke 9, 27 says, but I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here, which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. And so what the theory is of the people who believe that we are actually living in the short season right now, they believe that um, the, the, 
the Armageddon and everything actually happened around what we would think of as around 70 AD. So not too far after Christ resurrected um, is when it happened. And what we typically look at as the fall of Rome, which we, we were told happened, you know, gradually, like over a hundred years, that it actually, you know, that the history that they teach us, we, we know for a fact is changed. We see it happening before our eyes, which is why we have to ask these things. So was the timeline kind of switched around? And when we look at the fall of Rome, could that possibly be the tribulation and Armageddon? So let me see if this is the next. So here's another verse that um, they are arguing is also evidence of it. It says, Revelation 1 7 says, Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all peoples on earth will mourn because of him, so shall it be. Amen. So even those who pierced him. And the argument is that there were some um, Roman soldiers who pierced him, and that they would be there to see him coming back in the clouds. And, you know, I had never done such a deep dive into this before. And I was shocked to say the least. I remember, you know, like the first time that I looked into flat earth theory, I'm like, oh, how can anybody ever believe that? And then I looked into it and I'm like, wow, they've got some pretty good, you know, arguments. And I'm starting to feel that way about this. Again, I still have some questions. There are some things that I don't necessarily agree with when it comes to this. I have to say that because I know people always, they, they like to attack me in the comments and tell me that I shouldn't be talking about this stuff. And really, you know, if you see anything unbiblical that I am saying, point it out, please. Because I, you know, every time that I make these question the narrative videos, I pray, I pray to God for discernment because I do not want to deceive anyone. And I pray that he would, you know, just reveal to me the, the deception so that I would not then go on and share these things. So if you see anything that I am talking about here that is unbiblical, if you could, you could definitely leave a comment and then leave the, the verse in context that, that shows that what I'm saying is wrong. But so far I've been using, um, Bible verses. And so far, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, let me know if you see something that I am somehow missing. Um, now, the next thing that some people said that this could be evidence of a mud flood, which I don't know. I think this one is kind of iffy, but I thought I would share it anyway. Um, it's Revelation twelve fifteen, and it says, then from his mouth, the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with the torrent. And so what they're saying is that this destruction that happened in the tribulation and, you know, in Armageddon and everything, that was what caused those buried buildings, which I've got to tell you that I'm going to have to get into this in the next video. But like I told you that the timeline is, is messed up, at least according to if you, if you believe this. Um, and so the tribulation and everything did like 70 AD would really not have been as long ago as we believe. Um, there are a lot of people who believe that a thousand years has been falsely inserted into our timeline. And I'm not going to get into that too much today, but it's, it's what is typically known as the dark ages. Um, and what they're saying is that that was falsely inserted. And there are reasons that they believe that. But again, that's definitely for another video. And I'm definitely no expert on that. I'm not an expert on this either, but I know a little bit more about this than I do that. But anyway, um, so when we actually look, at the fall of Rome, you know, we are, we're told again that it happened gradually, but if you actually read about the fall of Rome, which again, you just never know what's true and what's not. A lot of the events that happened during this time, specifically during the time of Nero, who a lot of people believe, you know, ha is, is what is considered to be the antichrist. And they said that his name fits the the 666 number and it says that he persecuted christians he did he persecuted christians he beheaded them he tortured them um he was he also i think that they said that he also actually um performed what they would call the the abomin sorry let me figure out what that said sorry i was like ready to cough but anyway the abomination of desolation that that nero also did that um, we have Nero here, and I have a little 
article here about him. And again, you know, it's just one of those things where I think that sometimes you can find some truth in the things that we read regarding history, but I definitely think that there are some things that have been changed around, not just regarding this, but about a lot of things. But it does talk about Nero and that there were people who believed that he was the Antichrist. Um, so let me see. Just trying to find out where it specifically talked about what he did. Okay. It was up to the 5th century that early Christians feared Nero's return. Nero, who was known as the first great persecutor of Christians, hated Christians and ordered punishments for them because they disregarded the Roman gods and spread superstition. He would frequently order Christians to be thrown to the dogs, crucified, or burned alive. In fact, many early Christians believed that Nero was the Antichrist who would return to wage an apocalyptic war on Christianity. And, you know, so the thing is, is that what if, what if all of this is what we would refer to as the tribulation and Armageddon? And again, I have to keep saying this because I know how upset people get. I'm just asking questions. This is something that I actually just came across. I've been studying it maybe two weeks. So I, you know, I definitely wouldn't bet the bank on it, but I'm presenting this to you. Um, let me see. So I'll, I'll leave this link if you want to read about it. But again, I always read these things with a grain of salt. Now, if you want to also talk about a lot of the damage that was done and remember that there are a lot of Romanesque buildings, the, the, um, ruins that can be found worldwide. So even though we hear about the fall of Rome, remember that the Roman empire was not just in Rome. Um, it was spread out. And I also, I just wanted to show these. I found these to be interesting. And I'm not saying this comes from the same time, but these are some castles in Turkey. And it says that they're built in rock, but there are a lot of people who believe that these actually are, they came about by some sort of cataclysm. They almost look like maybe melting. I'm not really sure. But yeah, there are a lot of people who said these were not built into rock. These were buildings that something happened and they were, they were covered. Um, we'll just look at some others. This reminds you of Petra. And if you look, it's like very Romanesque. This is Cappadocia. For some reason, it won't let me enlarge these. Oh, that one it did. Some of the Cappadocia pictures, it wasn't letting me enlarge, but that's just another example. Um, and there are actually examples of these in other parts of the world. It's hard to find them. Like if you don't know the exact location and you just type this stuff up, it's like impossible to figure out. Here we have, oh, it didn't even enlarge, a rock home in, Ca in Cappadocia. And you have to ask, was it built in rock or did was it petrified or did something happen? But again, um, from here, it looks like there's columns. And just for the windows, it looks very Roman. But I, you know, I really encourage you to just kind of just click on this. Type in, what did I type in? Turkey Castle built in rock. It's amazing some of the stuff that you find here. Um, oh, here, let me see if this one would be bigger. There we go. Yeah, so definitely looks like rock could have been built as rock. But again, you have to wonder just like how difficult that would be um, kind of building it right into there. There was also one. So this is Petra. Petra, a lot of people are saying definitely looks like some melting happened. Um, and, and you have to just wonder, you know, how did these things get this way? If you could actually, this looks like stairs here. Um, some of these things look like windows. I would love to go to Petra in person sometime. But, and then a lot of these ruins also have, they're, they're like blackened. They look like they're charred by fire. And again, I'm not saying that these things happen the same time as the Roman Empire and everything. But what I'm saying is that there's a lot of evidence of catastrophic things happening. And a lot of times historians just kind of write them off as being, you know, oh, well, 
and then they give rather mundane explanations. But if you actually look into it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Okay, so here's another example here. Um, it definitely looks like something happened. I don't know the if this is the natural color of the rock or not around here, but some people believe that this looks like maybe possibly burned. It definitely doesn't look like it was naturally built like this. They always tell us that it was, and maybe it could be, but you know, you just have to question these things. We've got another one of these castles that somehow became a rock. And yet another one. This definitely looks like it could have been charred here. And some more. Um, okay. And then I just, I tried typing in melted buildings Tartaria to see if something else would show up. And I didn't really get a whole lot. Again, it's like really difficult to find these things unless you know exact, the exact locations. Okay, and this is, I believe it's in Arizona, and it's it's called Castle Rock, and they're they're not trying to say that it's actually a castle. They're just saying that it was named that because it looks like a castle, which it does. It looks like a castle up on a hill, and if you remember, they always used to build their castles on a hill because it was a good way to protect them from their enemies. Um, but there are a lot of people who are saying that this definitely looks like it could be a petrified castle. I had seen a video um, video footage of a drone that was sent up there by it, and it definitely looked like there were columns that were in the rock. Um, I, I need to start bookmarking this stuff when I see it, because then I can like never find it again. But this is, again, it's Castle Rock. So really, I think if we just start, we have to look at things in a new way, and we have to ask these questions. So now, now we're going to get into the thousand year reign. So what we have, what, what we have been always believing is that we are in the pre-tribulation period right now. And that what they're saying is that no, all of that already happened. We are actually in the short season when Satan has been released. And again, you know, I know that a lot of people scoff at that, but we know that Satan is a liar and we know that he is going to do everything he can during that short season to deceive the nations. And I think that we can't, we can't just write that off. Here's one more picture that I just found. I actually showed this in my last video, um, my mud flood video, but what I actually discovered today was that, I believe that someone said that this was actually, they were excavating some Roman ruins, some that were from the, uh, definitely looks very built out though for it to be Roman ruins. But what they were saying today was that this was actually in the 1930s and that they had started digging out some of the Roman buildings from the, the fall of the Roman Empire. I don't know 100%, but I thought that I would bring that up because I did have it in my last video and I said that I thought it was possibly a mud flood. But what they're saying is that they think that they were digging things out. So just wanted to make sure that I said that. Um, let me see. Anyway, so the thousand year reign of Christ. What they are saying is that what we are looking at as Tartaria, as these beautiful buildings that remember how I made the video about the, the buildings all over the world that look like they were from a global civilization. Well, what they are saying is that this is the period of Christ's reign on earth. And it wasn't just, this was like more towards the end of the thousand years, but what they're saying is that what we are told is like the Renaissance with the beautiful Renaissance paintings. Um, let me just type that in here. So what we are looking at as these beautiful Renaissance paintings, the beautiful sculptures that we see in these buildings, um, the music that was created in those days. And I talked about this before. It, it, to me, it definitely is evidence of the law of entropy that things break down over time because I saw something the other day where there was like, it looked like somebody scribbled on a piece of canvas with a crayon and it was selling for millions of dollars. And yet we have this going on here. And if you remember like 
a lot of the time during the time that these paintings were being created, the, these were they were believers. You know, religion was very important to the people who were painting these. And so what people are saying is that, yes, what we are told is the Renaissance is actually the thousand year reign of Christ. Um, and they're saying that explains the the architecture that explains the art that explains the the music um it explains the culture now does it mean that it was perfect during those times no because like a video that i watched the other day you know people we, we still we still struggle with sin and even during that thousand year reign people are going to struggle with sin but there is not going to be the oppression that we have because of satan and the evil ones that right now and we we have to say that yeah we are definitely being oppressed by satan and the evil ones right now and this is something that they're saying that these are the results <laughs> look it's a it's that actress i just noticed it now i forget what her name is from charlie and the chocolate factory anyway that was funny sorry anyway um so yeah so they're saying that that's that's why that's why we're seeing these worldwide buildings that, that all seem to look the same. That's why the music and the sculptures and just even the culture and the um, everything just seemed to be so much better during this time. And they said, there, there's not the satanic oppression during this time. Now, this is where I do tend to have a bit of an issue with it because I wish that I knew one right now, but some of these older buildings, if you look at them, do seem to have like a Masonic or Illuminati type symbols on them. I know that somebody commented that one of the pictures that I shared in the last video, I wish I would have looked it up, had like an owl by a clock and an owl is a very occult figure. Um, and so that's, that's what has me, you know, wondering like, why why that sort of symbology would be on these buildings if these buildings were built during the thousand year reign of christ why are these masonic um symbols on there why the illuminati symbols why these occult symbols sometimes um like the the eye of horus is sometimes seen on some of these so you know that's why that's why i say i'm asking questions but i'm not going to say right away i 100 percent believe that that this is true because I don't 100% believe that it's true. I just believe that it's worth looking at. But that is a question that I have is, well, then why is there all this occult symbology in a lot of these buildings? Now, I know there are some who will say that possibly the meaning was changed. Um, and you know, that that is a possibility, but really that is, that is one thing that is holding me back right now is just wondering about that, that one thing. Um, anyway, I'm gonna continue this in another video, because I know that this one is probably pretty long, um, but we're gonna talk about how Satan being released after the thousand years could have possibly, you know, you, you think that maybe if he was being released from a prison after a thousand years, it could have shaken the earth up a little bit and it could have caused some of the calamities that of what we call the mud floods today. So anyway, that's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can either leave one here or on Instagram or on my YouTube community page. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And I hope you have a great day.